So this is new, and I'm telling you, this is, this is something I want everyone at home to pay attention to because this is the effect of what you're doing. This is our first look at Ohio's curves, similar to the curves I've always been showing you. And it's very important to say that everything you have been doing, this would have been us by our projections. And again, this is beginning data. The more testing, the better these models get. But from what we can tell, and we have some great modelers coming out of the Cleveland Clinic and OSU and all our faculty working with my team, this would have been the peak of our surge had we not taken the decisive and important actions. I can't tell you enough, this is so important. We have got to even clamp down more. We have got to stay at home, and we can't go the other direction right now because you can actually see a shift but what we're seeing, and you can see how it's a shaded, ranged area. This will be on our website. This is our curve in Ohio based on the mitigation that we have done. Um, and you can see it's a range. So the better we do, the more we push it out, the more we lower that curve. Remember that we have a hospital capacity line somewhere in here. We have, through our collective work together in Ohio, decreased that impact on our healthcare system by anywhere from 50 to 75%. That's crucial, but we've got to do it even more because we are buying time, as the governor said. The further we spread out that spread of infection, the more time our hospitals are getting ready and doubling their capacity. But also, you know, I, I need you to know that it's not if but when. We will surge. At our peak surge, we may be as high as 6,000 to 8,000 new cases a day. So we're trying to keep that number. We're, we're fending that off as long as possible. Our hospitals are gearing up more capacity. And we're also lowering that curve and less people are getting infected. So that is going to make all the difference in our ability to handle this. We will exceed our capacity, but we've really been minimizing that amount. So Ohio, what you're doing absolutely is saving lives. Um, with this, we see our peak is moving out toward, that surge is moving out toward the end of April. We'd like to get it even further out toward the beginning of May because it will keep shrinking each time we do that. I want to add that Dr. Fauci shared some preliminary research. I was reminded of it when the governor shared the old St. Louis and Philadelphia curve. Um, we know that they're going to be kind of different high points. It's not going to be a smooth curve. Um, we don't yet know the effect of, of seasonality on it. We do not think it will go away completely. But anytime we let up on these measures right now, we can actually see surges again. So it's very, very important we follow those directions. Next slide. I want to talk a little bit about our need for PPE. This is also so crucial, and the moves you're making now by staying at home are actually helping us maximize the protective gear our frontline workers have. Um, right now, out in the field, this slide shows what a typical month usage is by our hospital system in our nursing homes. And we know already, um, mitigated versus unmitigated, if we had done nothing, we would already be way exceeding, but because we're doing things, we're staying real close to what we have. Um, but we know still that we're gonna need extra, both of gloves, gowns, and surgical masks, but the moves you're making are making our supplies go longer. The big one we're looking at are those N95 respirators. Those are the specialized masks for hospital personnel, not the surgical ones or the ones we might even make at home to not spread infection. But it is those specialized masks we know even with the efforts we're making, um, we're gonna need millions more. Um, but we would have need 65 times as many as our typical usage. We've lowered that down to 40 times as much. So again, everything we're doing is making all our gear last longer. Next slide. Our hospital ca capacity, we've been told, is at about 60% with our heavy flu season. Um, but I want to talk a little bit more about the specialized parts of hospitals. This slide will show you what we have available is in the light blue, what we're utilizing right now in our hospitals based on OHA Hospital Association data. These are negative airflow rooms that allow us to keep that infection from spreading in the hospital. ECMO, which is a basic type of oxygenation 
for very, very sick, our sickest people, ECMO it's called. Um, we're only using about 13% of that right now. We have more capacity in light blue, but what our numbers are showing is that we know that we are gonna either almost double what we need above this. So we're gonna have room to use right now, but as that surge comes, we're actually building out more capacity because we know we're gonna go up above what our hospitals normally have as their capacity. This is ICU beds, our medical surgical beds, and our ventilators. So we have capacity, we need more. We're doing unique things about repurposing anesthesia machines, repurposing something called CPAP, positive airway pressure machines. We're doing new tubing where more than one person can be on a ventilator at one time. We are inventing things. We are building out hospitals um, and existing building structures, uh, but we know we will need more. Next slide. So that is sort of a summary of uh, some of the data. We're gonna have more for you every day. As the governor said, we're working closely with our hospitals in a regional model to build out a capacity. We'll have more on that for you. Um, one thing I'd like to touch on, um, a hospitalized patient is in a hospital um, with co coronavirus, with COVID-19 for up to 20 days. Remember I told you about by the time you're diagnosed, remember, from when you're first infected, it might be five to 14 days before you show symptoms. It's another nine to 12 days between someone who actually has a disease might need hospitalized. It's another week or more before they might end up in an ICU, and our fatalities, our deaths follow those ICUs by up to four weeks. So everything we're seeing is lagging, and it's a lot like restaurants. They try to guess how many tables they'll need for a night. And whether we realize it or not, they're trying to flip those tables every hour to hour and a half. And that's how they staff, and that's how they know how many tables they'll be able to fill. And that's, you know, what we're looking at is more like a long four-course meal. Even though our hospitals have capacity that they usually gear up for, they're often looking at staying times of three days. But we know that we're gonna hit peak capacity that we've never seen before in this country and that folks are staying longer. And so that's why we know we really need to increase our capacity in our hospitals. Everything you're doing matters. It's life and death. And folks, please pay attention. You see what's happening in New York. You see what's happening in places like Louisiana. This, this is real and everything each of us is doing matters. <clears throat>